What's going on everybody? Welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about the M2 MacBook Air. More specifically, my 11 month review of this base spec M2 Air in the midnight colorway, which I think looks really good by the way. And if you like content like this, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. So I've had this Mac since January of this year, so a little over 11 months now, and I initially got it after my wife got hers. So a little bit of a spoiler alert, this Mac was so nice, we bought it twice. However, this one is hers and this one is mine, and I use mine a little bit differently than she does. But after I was able to see how well this M2 MacBook worked, I sold my M1 Air and my i5 13 inch Pro in order to get this. And I really haven't looked back. I also have a desktop computer that I initially was doing some editing on for videos and photography, things like that. And this has also replaced that. It's pretty much become my main computer aside from gaming, which is still better on that one, and it's more built to game anyway. So this video is gonna be broken into two halves. The first half talking about the things I like about this MacBook, and the second half talking about the things I wish were a little bit better, and for more money, can be better. So with that being said, let's start off with some things that I like. And just so I don't knock things off the table, they are super light by the way, we're gonna go ahead and just put that one down. But to start things off, we're gonna talk about the addition of the MagSafe port. So the M1 MacBook did not have that, neither did the i5 on the MacBook Pro. You had to charge via the USB-C port, which was okay for the most part, but if you had it on a table and you bumped it, that USB-C port was in there pretty good. It would end up taking your MacBook and it could sometimes go flying off the shelf. The MagSafe fixes all that, so you bump that, it flies off. But if you pull on it slowly, it has enough magnetic force to stay attached. It's just those quick jarring moments that it flies off, which is nice because you don't have to worry about it falling off at random times, but when it needs to unclip itself, it does. What's also really nice about that is it frees up these two additional USB-C ports. And I'll show you guys in a second here. I have a dock on my desk that also helps one of the drawbacks on this. So more on that in a second. So now let's go on to the next thing that I like about this, and that is the extreme portability. So this thing weighs pretty much next to nothing. It is lighter than the M1 that it is replacing, even though it is a little bit bigger, you get more screen real estate. They somehow managed to reduce the weight even further. So if you were to put this into your bag, it doesn't weigh a bunch at all. Sometimes you maybe wouldn't even know it was there. Let me show you an example here where I'm gonna hold up this backpack and I'm gonna have my wife place the MacBook in the bag, and I'm gonna be holding it up with my pinky. There is literally no difference between me holding the bag and then putting this laptop in, like I can hardly even feel it. So that's just to give you an idea how light this thing really is. So if you want a super light laptop, this is it. The battery life is also a positive factor on this where it lasts a very, very long time. So if you're doing day-to-day -day tasks, web browsing, surfing around, emails, iMessage, all that kind of stuff, it's going to last probably for a few days. If you're doing more intensive tasks like photo editing or some video editing, it'll slow down a little bit on the battery side. Maybe you're gonna get a day's worth, but I've taken this on a plane, I've taken it home, I've sat outside, and I've edited a few TikToks and YouTube shorts and some videos that I've posted to my channel in long form, and this battery has no issue doing that whatsoever. It's one of the best laptops I've used for battery. So if that is something you're looking for, this has that. Another thing to add to the plus side on this MacBook is the display. The display is really nice. It's not not the liquid retina xdr display you get on the macbook pro but it is still a very very nice display you get 100 more nits than the m1 and you can actually use this thing in direct sunlight let me show you what that looks like here i placed it down kind of at an angle in the sun and you can easily see the screen without any issue another thing i like about this is the ssd and you can read all around the 256 gigabyte ssd is a little bit slower than the m1 of last year the read write speeds are a little bit slower just because i used a single chip this year if you want the faster ssd speeds you can get the 512 or the terabyte, but I really haven't noticed day-to-day -day performance issues with this SSD whatsoever. And I push it through a bit more paces than what my wife does on hers. Like I do my DaVinci Resolve editing on this, and every video that is on my YouTube channel now, this video you're watching currently, is all edited on this MacBook. And I haven't had any issues where I've noticed like lagging or the color wheel that pops up and starts spinning. It's been a great little machine and I can't find any issues with the 256 gigabyte hard drive. I have an external, but that doesn't impact the performance internally. So I haven't had issues, but if you feel like you want something a little bit faster, a little bit more future-proof, maybe that's what you'd want to get. And there's a long list of things to like, but I'll just mention one more. And that's just the everyday performance of this machine with the M2 chip. It is significantly faster than that of the M1. I don't think I've ever found a time where the M2 is reaching near 100% of its performance ability, but most of the time I'm just doing 1080p, sometimes 2k content, where it's not going to tax it too much. So now that we've talked a lot about the good stuff, let's talk about a few things I wish were a little bit better. 
starting with a few cosmetic things, and this may not be the biggest issue to some people. I like to keep my things a little clean, shiny is nice, you know. So the fingerprints on this Midnight One begin to kind of stack up and it attracts them pretty easily. Um, is it the biggest deal? No, you can kind of touch it like this and eventually those are gonna show up. The more you use it, the more fingerprints you get. So that's just something to keep in mind. If you like your stuff to look new without a lot of maintenance, maybe a different color is better. And there's good, it's a good thing they come in lots of colors, but this one does look pretty good, like I said. So I ended up getting this one. I found that if you use like a lens wipe for glasses like these, you can get a box of like 400 on Amazon for like $16. One of those is enough to clean the front and the back side of this MacBook. So you could technically clean your MacBook 400 times for $16 which I think is pretty good and I can live with it. It's not that big of a deal, which brings me to the next thing. Again, cosmetic, it's the finish on this and I don't know if it's like a lighter coat on the black, but there is a bit more wear and tear that occurs on these USB-C ports. Is it really that big of a deal though? You don't look at your MacBook from the side, you know, this way. You look at it straight on and if you don't know where to look to see like, how does my MacBook Air compare to that of someone else's in this coffee shop, you're not gonna be really scoping out scuff marks on the side of a MacBook. But again, cosmetically, if that is something you care about, something to keep in mind is that there is a bit more wear on these black ones, but I've had it for 11 or so months now and it's not like it's peeling off completely. You can just see a little bit of chipping and, and stuff right around the port itself. So now let's get into an actual physical limitation of this MacBook. And it was a limitation really when Apple switched to their own silicon, so the M1 chip, the M2, and even the newest M3 chip, but they're all the, the base model chips. So M1, M2, M3, not the M1 Pro, M2 Pro, and so on and so forth. With the base model chips, you are natively allowed to run one external monitor. And this has been a drawback I've seen on a lot of forums and other videos where I wish I could run two, but on these you can't. So you're really forced to buy a $2,000 MacBook if you want to run dual monitors. However, there is a workaround for this, and I found this when I had my M1 MacBook, is you can download something called a DisplayLink driver that works with a DisplayLink capable dock, which I have here. This is the pluggable device, and this little device gives me six USB ports, but it also allows me to run dual 4K monitors on this M2 MacBook. Normally this would not be allowed and you also get full control over this as you would natively. So I can control my color output, I can control my refresh rate, I can control my resolution, and I can even go in and do my arrangement just like I would be able to if this MacBook supported it on its own. So that's really, really nice. You can get this for about $1,000, save yourself $1,000, buy this dock for $100, and you're still $900 up. So you can put that into a really, really nice monitor or too. So that's one thing I wanted to mention because technically it is a drawback, but it also can be a plus because you can fix it for pretty cheap. And if it was a deal breaker for you, it doesn't have to be. So for me, this MacBook gets two big thumbs up and hopefully this helps you guys get a better idea of what this device is able to do, what it's capable of, and you know some of the drawbacks that you could potentially fix. Or if you were wondering if this thing could even run, maybe a video editor like DaVinci Resolve. And that's really all I got guys. So if you liked the video, maybe give me a big thumbs up as well. If you have any questions about this MacBook, concerns, or if you just want to say something, drop it in the comments. I always like to see those. And thanks so much for sticking around and watching this video. See you guys.